Hi, I'm Pierre Asti. I've been a sommelier since about 2009 and I'd like to pass on to you some of what I've learned about pairing wine and food. You know, it's absolutely crazy. Whether it's in music, movies, sports, or TV, we're always looking for the star. Typically, there is the star, plus a variety of supporting actors. Rarely do we find a great movie or TV show that has two co-stars. We're wired to follow the star. Now on the flip side, over the years, there have been some pretty incredible duos. Actually, they've been in a variety of different arenas. Abbott and Costello, Butch and Sundance, Lemon and Mathau, Mike and Molly, Pitt and Clooney, Bert and Ernie, Itchy and Scratchy, <laughs> I could go on. Each of these pairs are great individually, but there's something unique and even more memorable when you put them together. That's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna to put together wine and food. Whether you're going out to dinner or prepping at home, these tips are for you. No matter where you find yourself, following all or some of these seven easy steps will make both your food and wine taste better. Many people go by the philosophy, anything can go with anything. And that's okay, especially if that's what you want. However, what I want to do is show you how to complement both your wine and your food. In this video, we're going to look at the seven things that will simplify pairing wine and food. Keep in mind, at any time, if you like what you hear, click like or subscribe or hit the little bell so that you'll be notified when there are new posts. Okay, pairing wine and food. The first approach is the classical match, also known as the regional match. This is when you choose the wines from the region of the world that the dish originally was made. Said another way, what grows together goes together. Frequently, some will say with chicken, fish, and pork, you drink white wine. And with beef, you drink red. Let me caution you. I make a chicken dish called Chicken Ricardo. It's an elaborate, heavy, tomato-based sauce, garlic, basil, you name it, it's in the sauce. I simmer it all day, sometimes too. The house smells absolutely phenomenal. Now just before serving it, I throw several chicken breasts on the grill. Grill them till they're about half or three quarters done, take them off, cut them up, put them in the simmering sauce and let them simmer on low for 45 minutes to an hour to make sure that they capture some of the flavor of the sauce. Now some would say, that's a chicken meal. You should be drinking a white wine. With my Italian chicken Riccardo, expect a phenomenal classic or regional match of a nice Italian red. Likewise, if you're dishing up a big bowl of the Spanish dish paella, a Spanish albariño, that's a white wine, would be absolutely perfect. Or a Spanish tempranillo, if you lean towards reds. Another regional match to think about is, I like to grill Alaskan wild sockeyed salmon on a cedar plank. For me, the go-to wine would be a Pinot Noir from close by Willamette Valley, Oregon, rather than a white wine. <laughs> now, if you're geographically challenged, don't worry about it. The following tips will definitely help you out. The number two tip is body. Both red and white wines are on a continuum of being anything from very light to very full. The same thing holds true for food. You'll find everything from very light, delicate foods to very full, heavy dishes that have a lot going on. When it comes to the body, you want to match the weight of your food to the weight of your wine. Light food pairs best with light body wines. Heavy foods pair best with full bodied wine. A trick of the trade in determining this is by looking at the color of the food and the wine. A meal with a light, even delicate sauce, both in color and texture, go well with light body wine. If you have a heavy, dark, super stew, those go better with a full bodied wine. The number three tip is acid mirrors acid. Now acid is the element in wine that causes your mouth to water and prepares your palate for food. 
Food that have a high acidic level would pair well with light citrusy acidic white wines. Summer fruit salads, chicken piccata, spaghetti with a light, not a full body, but a light tomato sauce. Now, rich dishes with butter or cream, oily fish and buttery shellfish would work well with a fresh citrusy Pinot Grigio or a Sauvignon Blanc, a white Bordeaux, a white from Sancerre or maybe a Vouvray from Alsace, France or Germany. Pairing with many of these wines would be like adding just a squeeze or just a touch of lemon to each of those dishes. The number four tip is tannin loves fat. Tannin is the element in wine that dries your mouth out. It kind of makes your, your mouth pucker. It tastes somewhat bitter. Food with a higher fat content like well-marbled steak, braised duck, bratwurst or sausage will soften and balance out the tannin in the wine. Acidic foods, like I mentioned a second ago, clash with tannins. You won't enjoy an acidic entree with a highly tannic wine. The easiest way to remember pairing your meats and wines is the less marble or less fat in the meat, the lighter the red wine. The more fat, the darker the red wine. How are you doing there? Is this information making sense? If it is, write ASTI in the comments below. The number five tip is heat needs sweet. Those foods that have a fair amount or even a lot of kick to them, your go-to wine would be a sweet or semi-sweet wine. Now, I know, I know some of you are saying, I don't like sweet wines, but I assure you with hot and spicy foods, a Riesling or a Moscato is absolutely the way to go you'll be very pleasantly surprised. Now, when it comes to sweet wines, here's a couple more tips. The wine needs to be sweeter than the food. There are all kinds of sweet dessert wines that will pair well with your after dinner delights. Big red, big tannin wines rarely successfully match with sweets. But if you're indulging in chocolate, a Cabernet Sauvignon is absolutely the way to go. The number six tip is salty and fried needs acidity and effervescence. Said another way, fried chicken loves champagne. <laughs> no, really. I did this for a group down in the Florida Panhandle a while back. They were absolutely crazy about it. The flavors and bubbles minimize and cut through the salt and grease, the, the friedness of the chicken and adds a unique texture and flavor to the food. You really gotta try it. Also, the saltiness is cut by the acidity, like the acidic wines that we talked about earlier. When it comes to effervescence or the bubbles, for me, champagne goes with just about everything. The number seven tip, earthy needs earthy. Now, what do I mean by earthy foods? Beets, mushrooms, lentil, leeks, turnips, while game like turkey, deer, boar, pheasant, and the earthy wines that pair well with these earthy dishes would be like a Pinot Noir, a Gamay, Grenache, and a Chablis. So to wrap this up, what we want to do is complement the wine and the food. You want to consider what is the dominant flavor? Is it sweet? Salty? Citrusy? Is it fatty? Look particularly at the sauces. This is the big factor in how to pair things. Now let's not make this too complicated. Pairing for every day, keep it simple. If you want anything to go with anything, great. If you want to create a memorable meal, give it a little bit more thought. Use these tips to your advantage and before you know it, you'll be pairing like a pro. And above all else, have a good time with it. Well, there you have it. Everything you need to know about pairing wine and food. If you enjoyed this video and was helpful to you, let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe for new videos that come out every single week and give it a like if you liked it. If there's someone you know that's interested in wine, make sure you share this video with them. I'd really appreciate that. And ring the bell to be notified when I post other videos. Folks, I'm here to help and serve you as we learn more about wine together.